I think it's really interesting and important that Kansas voters in a shocking landslide voted to stop a constitutional provision that would have allowed extensive abortion bans. They were given the chance to be, in effect, majority tyrants, and they declined it. And in a way that nobody expected them to do, if you look at the numbers of the way that election broke down, it wouldn't have happened if, it, if there hadn't been significant Republican support for abortion rights, because Kansas is a red state that reliably votes Republican. And one thing that I think is important about that is that it shows that there is not broad popular support for abortion restrictions, even in conservative America. And I think this should give hope to supporters of abortion rights that not only are there already Republicans out there who are basically on their side on this issue, but also that Republicans can be persuaded I think, in fact, the basic argument to make is that the fetus does not have rights because it's not an individual. The woman has all the rights in this kind of case because she is an individual. And in America, what we care about is individual rights. And a big part of the reason why I think people, if they are honestly confused about this issue, are opposed to abortion rights is because they think abortion is murder. They think that the fetus or the embryo has rights. And in my experience, most supporters of abortion rights really don't grapple with the argument that abortion is murder. What they'll do is they'll point to the consequences of abortion for the woman's life. They'll say it gives her greater economic autonomy. It helps her pursue opportunities that she might not otherwise have been able to do. And I think that's all very important, but it has to be coupled with an argument regarding the moral issue, which is the claim that abortion represents murder. I think that in order to show that abortion isn't murder, you need to grapple with the argument that the fetus has rights, that it's an individual human being with rights. And I think the way to do that is to argue it doesn't have rights, even though it's, a, it's human genetically, it's not an individual human being and only individual human beings have individual rights. As a result, in the abortion question, the only one with any rights to speak of is the woman. The fetus has no rights. Uh, this comes from her view uh, that what makes individual rights applicable to anyone is individuation. You need to be physically and physiologically individuated from another person in order to have individual rights. And that's clearly not the case for an embryo or a fetus. And as such, the woman has an absolute right to abortion. People often ask the question, why do you use that word sacrosanct? That's a word that's associated with religion. And the answer to that question is, even though I'm an atheist and even though I'm defending the views of Ayn Rand, who was an atheist in favor of abortion rights, the word sacrosanct is one that we atheists should take back. What it means is sacred and precious. And in the abortion controversy, the only thing that is precious is the life of the woman who's living it. It's precious to her. It's the only life she has. She doesn't get another chance. I think it's an important concept that more abortion rights supporters need to think about because opponents of abortion often appeal to emotions to further their position. I think that's also often true on the pro-abortion rights side, that there's too much, in effect, shouting of slogans and not enough rational persuasion, not enough argumentation that grapples with the basic moral questions that I think a lot of people are confused about. If they want to change the minds of the people they're reaching out to, they need to convey that they are morally serious about the issue that they are advocating on behalf of.